I am the Dollar Sportsman. Thank you guys so much for watching today. Today, we have got the Air Venturi Avenger. This is the stock model with an Axion Reflex sight just on top, which we have had a ton of fun with. We're gonna talk about upgrades today. And one particular upgrade that comes to us from the beautiful world of capitalism. The beautiful world of air guns. Let's show you what we're talking about right now. So the Air Venturi Avenger came out on the market just a couple of years ago and it quickly became one of the most popular air guns in the entire industry. For selling only around $300 starters, uh, this very quickly took the market by storm because it had a ton of power, a ton of accuracy, and a ton of shots. From the stock fill of 4350 PSI, if I remember correctly, you can get around 80 shots out of this thing. It is regulated. It is a side charging air gun, which is fantastic. And it just came with all of the upgrades that you would want out of a really good air gun, but for only a few hundred bucks. I mean, it was kind of outrageous. Now there was one particular thing, just one thing that people didn't like about this gun. And that was the plastic stock. It sounds kind of hollow, but it is very lightweight. And that was a big advantage to it. But a lot of folks said, hey, you know, we don't like the plastic stock. Everything else about the gun is fantastic. We want uh, a wood stock. So Air Venturi released a wood stock version of this and uh, it's beautiful, absolutely awesome. Very cool wood stock, but that wasn't enough for the air gun community. No, because we have amazing people who innovate and they wanted to make a chassis for this gun. Now I have seen custom wood stocks for this. I have not yet gotten my hands on a custom chassis until today. So today we are talking about the Terminador. Terminator with a D. That's why it sounds like Terminador to me. ATAC, this is a chassis system that turns your Air Venturi Avenger into a very tactical looking chassified air gun. And we're gonna install that today and then we're gonna go test it out on the Utah Air Guns range and see what we can do with it. Now, below I have linked two videos that are very important. If you're gonna get one of these, you do need to know how to install it. And in the box that I received, there were no installation instructions except for one part which said what needs to go on first. So Terminator, Terminator, you're gonna have to correct me on that, which, <laughs> which way to say it, has installation videos. And there are two in particular, one for the actual chassis install and two for these moderator installs right here, including this baffle system. Those two are in the link below and you're gonna want those. I'm not gonna go through all the details of installation today because I wanna to get to testing the actual gun with this on it. So we're gonna get right to that. And we're gonna do a little magic, all right? So you see it as plastic right now? Watch carefully. And there we go. We have got the full chassis installed. Here we go, we've got the full chassis install. It is, um, I would say it takes some effort. It's a little involved, but it's not difficult. So we've got all the screws in. There are a bunch of screws left over, as you can see, littering my table here. And that is all from the original plastic system. Let's talk about the chassis. This system actually makes this extremely lightweight. This is a 3D printed chassis, so it is lightweight to begin with, and it makes the gun very, very light, uh, which is great for hunting. It may be less so for competition. Uh, you may want to add some sort of weight system, but in terms of the actual gun itself for carrying it around in the field, fantastic. I've got the bipods on this that he sent me, so thank you, Dana, at uh, Terminator. Terminator gonna keep doing that. So we've got that on. He also sent us the grip, the stock. These are customizable. You can change these out to whatever you like. You can customize it. It can be different colors. He sent me gray uh, with this beautiful bronze in the back as well. 
and this particular design, which is cool. You can get whatever design you'd like, which is awesome. I think he has specific ones, but uh, you might be able to come up with something in particular with him. The Air Venturi Avenger barrel itself uh, does not have an air stripper. I know you're not gonna be able to see down this tube, but there is no air stripper in there. So we take the air stripper. This looks very, very similar to the air stripper I had for the Umarix Gauntlet from Hajimoto. Uh, slightly different design though. So I'm going to slip that in. So when I tried to put the air stripper in, it actually got stuck. This might not be a perfect fit. I can see that my barrel is a little bit or rather my shroud is slightly bent right there, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to get that in. If we were to take this O-ring and use a slight smaller size, maybe it would fit. Now, these baffles would go in after the air stripper, just as so, and they would sit on top of it. Swapping out the O-ring on the air stripper with a slightly thinner one actually did work. So now we've got the air stripper in there. Make sure that it's seated properly. Now we will put the baffles on. I feel better about that now. So there you go. We will put the, what is called a monocore uh, moderator on here. And I do see a little bit of the 3D printed stuff right in the center. So it's always a good idea to take something and just kind of make sure that you don't have any of those fibers in the way. Awesome, there you have it. Again, matching color, very cool. Uh, the tests that Dana did at Terminator, he said that with the baffle system, and the moderator at the end, it was 10 decibels less, which is pretty nice because this gun is pretty loud from the factory. So that's it. We've got this all put together now. The only other thing that I will mention that we had a problem with when we were putting it together, this screw right here did not want to fit in right. And that's because there was a slight warp in the plastic on the chassis right here. And so the holes were not perfectly lined up. So it was a bear to get that in. You either have to modify the plastic a little bit, which would be the correct thing to do so that this would screw in properly. I actually screwed this in so that it is crooked. I may have stripped the screw and the internals, which is not good. So you may need to modify that a little bit. And that's something that you risk with 3D printing at any time that something might get slightly warped during the process. Other than that, I'm excited to get this out. Uh, we're gonna test it at the range and see how we do. Shall we go? Let's go. All right, I'm at the Utah Air Guns range. I am all set up. Now, one thing that I do need to point out from the last video is there was a little O-ring that came in the package that I completely forgot to put into the shroud. So these guys happen to have one and uh, hooked me up. So now there's an O-ring in the shroud as it should be. We're gonna take some shots. This is just using a reflex sight. So we're not going for extreme distance here. Just gonna take a look at the accuracy and see how it shoots with this chassis on board. Let's do it. Would help if I had air. Well guys, I'm afraid I have a leak in my Avenger that doesn't have to do with this. Um, it has to do with something coming out of the actual barrel itself. So. That's unfortunate. Pressure in here to take a couple of shots. We'll see real quick. And I forgot to screw the top on again too. That was the other problem. Oh, you did. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> Justin's <laughs> laughing at me over there. The problem with the, uh, with the moderator that we had on here is that it got in the way of the fill port. If you have a longer fill, um, on your hose. So for that reason, I took it off, completely forgot. So we'll get back to this again very soon, hopefully. I was just at Utah Air Guns and those guys are rocking. Um, they tried to help me out. We had a ton of technical difficulties. Um, we have a leak from the bottle right here when I get above 2200 PSI. Tried switching the O-rings, it didn't work. I think maybe I just need to tighten it a bit, but it's holding pressure right now at 2200. So we're gonna have to go with that to see how this shoots. We're gonna give this a few shots at the indoor range. This is a 10 yard range and I'm using a reflex sight. So I'm not really going for distance here anyway. I wanna see how this feels when I actually shoot it. Okay, so here we go. Probably not sighted in, but we'll go for groups. So put the red dot right on the center. Okay. Feels good. Felt 
myself move with that. All right, we got one more shot. Hoo -hoo -hoo. Okay, so um, not bad, not bad at all. Again, this is a reflex sight. I'm not going for the most precise groups here. I know what this is capable of. More importantly, I wanted to see how it feels actually as I shoot it. Okay guys, we're at 1900 PSI. We're gonna go for just a few more shots here. All right. Bullseye, bullseye. Yeehaw, that was a little high. Here, here we go. Trying to hit that bullseye. Not too bad, not too bad. All right, now, another test because this is so lightweight. Let's try it offhand here. Going for the center bullseye. I missed just low. Not bad. Not bad. Oh, one more. <laughs> hey, that's fun. That is fun. Oh my gosh, this is so light. All right, let's go in and talk about it. So now that we finally had a chance to shoot this, uh, we tried it on the long range. We ended up having some issues, technical difficulties. I have a leak in my bottle right here, which may just be an O-ring. I replaced the O-ring though, and there's still an issue. So I'm gonna try doing a little more work to this to see if I can get that leak fixed. However, it is interesting to note that as the gun sat, it sat at about 2200 PSI for a long time, and that is exactly where it starts to leak afterwards. So I think what happened was is that the O-ring conformed at that pressure and is having a hard time with it after that. So with the newer O-ring on the other hand, it shouldn't have been an issue. So I'm not sure, I'll have to work on it. As for the chassis itself, uh, the pros were it is extremely lightweight. Uh, if you're gonna shoot offhand, that is a major advantage in terms of having to carry it around, having to hold it up. That's great. Some of the cons to that is that you cannot shoot with as much precision in terms of a lot of guys when they compete, they put a ton of weight on their guns and that's to keep it from bouncing. And I did notice when I was shooting this that there is some bounce to it now because it is so lightweight, I do get a little bit of movement going up as I shoot. Is it extremely bad? No. However, it could make a difference when you're going for long range shots. We'll have to try more of that with a proper scope but for the short range stuff and for around the house, around the property, pesting, this is what I keep on it for a reason, and it's awesome. Another pro is the fact that it, even though it bounces, it does have all of these bands to keep everything together so you don't have additional harmonics that are gonna cause you problems. One thing I will say is that the placement of the bipod is right here about in the center of the gun. Now, that can be beneficial but it can also be a problem because it, you normally get a lot more accuracy when you have a bipod that's placed much further up. And the original Avenger stock actually did place that bipod further up. So that could be a con. You can move it up a little bit with the Picatinny mounts, uh, a little bit further than where it is. And you can also lean your bipod forward, which also gives some advantage by several inches and that can get you a little more stable and actually I like shooting that way a lot. Now another thing that we noticed is the moderator that came with it. It may make it quieter, however because of its size it actually got in the way of the fill port. So we were trying to fill and some fill ports look like this, in fact many of them do, where you have a long portion here instead of the short ones. There are short versions and I don't believe you would have an issue getting your fill tank onto this with that moderator on using a short one but with a long one like the ones that were in Utah Air Guns and the ones that I use, I could not fit them on 
without taking the moderator off. Because of that, I actually shot this without a cap or moderator on the front of it and blew all of the baffles out of this and then blew the air stripper. It happened twice. And uh, it's because I didn't think about it. I was in a rush to get my shooting done and I had forgotten to put a cap or a moderator back on. Now this particular moderator being 3D printed, I had to take it on and off a few times because of dealing with my O-rings and putting the baffles in and then forgetting, et cetera, um, and trying to fill it for that matter. And I did notice that it started to strip just a bit because of taking it on and off several times. Again, it's 3D printed, so you're gonna have that issue with any sort of 3D printed material. But I did keep the air stripper and the baffles inside here. So there is some reduction in the noise itself. I also appreciate the fact that the air stripper is keeping that barrel exactly aligned with the shroud. So there you have it, guys. Uh, this, all in all, it's a very cool product. I'm excited to have this set up this way now. It looks very cool. It is wholly customizable. I think it would benefit uh, from having this piece come out further. This whole piece comes out to where the OEM band used to be. That would allow you to put a bipod right up here. That would be an improvement. And then the other improvement was just making that moderator thinner so that we can actually connect to the fill port. Other than that though, it's pretty slick. And the fact that you can 3D print something like this and it has enough strength to be able to hold up is quite impressive. It felt pretty comfortable shouldering this as I shot it and especially holding it offhand. I'm, I struggle with offhand shots, I really do. <laughs> That's, that's something I've got to practice a lot more. But the fact that this was so light, it did make it easier to keep it on and be able to get close to what I wanted to shoot. Now granted, again, reflex sight, whatever. That's all right. But you could see that I was moving a little bit enough to be just off. That's all I got to say, guys. If you want one of these for yourself, for your own Avenger, there is a link below. Please watch the reviews from Terminator or Ter Terminator. Terminator channel, uh, you can watch. He has created a lot of stuff like this for the Gauntlet, for the Origin, and for the Avenger. It's pretty freaking slick. Go check it out. Thank you so much uh, to Dana at Terminator for sending this out to me uh, to review and get my hands on. I have enjoyed the process. Now, I'm going to go figure out this leak, and you guys have a wonderful weekend. Thank you for watching. Yes! <laughs> you guys excited? Yes. Excited. Yeah! No, it starts drilling. I guess it was. This is going to be a fun adventure. Yeah. Well done. No Johnson. <laughs> Do you see that? Woo! Yeah! You can do this. Get out there. Let's go do this. <laughs> Woo! Fine. He's so fired up. This guy. I love oh, this guy.